Coming up on Radio Vision, we take a look at the It's a Small World pep rally and we discuss the impact of School of Rock on friendships among Gulliver students. I'm Carlos Escotet and this is Radio Vision. The It's a Small World pep rally was an exciting event which celebrated cultures around the globe. Reporter Sasha Gilling tells us more. The World Languages Department, along with over 300 students, helped organize the Small World event, which included a school-wide performance in the gym and also offered international foods and entertainment for all. Senora Argote and Senora Molina give us some insight on how the week went. Uh, Mondays uh, was the opening day uh, for the It's a Small World celebration, so on that day we showcase um, some Latin American dance, traditional dances. So, for example, we have a demonstration of uh, dance from Colombia and also from Mexico and from Peru. On Wednesday, there was a main show, and Senor Molina has a few words about On it. On Wednesday is when we do the main show, and uh, this is actually the fifth year that we've done it and it showcases the talents of, of students and the diversity of our community here at Gulliver. Uh, this year there were 15 shows, three of which were external, but the rest are all students performing and again, show, uh, showcasing their, their talents. For Ray Division, I'm Sasha Gilling. Many students at Gulliver venture onto many other activities after school, some of which enjoy the sound of music. It's a music program that is different from traditional music schools in that everyone here is part of a band and no matter their, their level, um, everyone gets to be part of, the, of an ensemble. So kids come in and even, even if they've never played anything, they prepare with private lessons and then they join other kids who are also beginners and they, they kind of start playing together and we notice that they make a lot of progress very quickly. So the original School of Rock started back in 1993 in Philadelphia and ever since then it has grown exponentially uh, with over 300 locations at the moment throughout the world. Our son, our older son, Nick, uh, he actually started a School of Rock at a different location of School of Rock down by the falls uh, and uh, we really saw how he progressed really well on the guitar and uh, he became amazing. Uh, and it wasn't just about the guitar, it was actually the fact that he also found uh, a group of friends, a group of kids that were uh, similar to him. And we had just moved uh, from California, so it was a perfect scenario. So we got inspired by what School of Rock actually creates, not just the business, uh, and decided to open the uh, School of Rock uh, first location, which is the one here at Sunset. So we start at age five, and basically from five to seven years old, uh, we do what's called rookies. They meet once a week. They get to try all the instruments that we teach at School of Rock. And it's a way to introduce them to music and also for them to decide what's gonna be the instrument that they're ultimately going to pursue in lessons. From there, they move on to Rock 101, which is our beginner band program, followed by 201, which is a step, a little bit of a step up from, from 101, but uh, it's also based on age. And then after that, performance program. Uh, the difference is performance uh, always performs at a show at the end of the season, and those kids are committed to certain parts. So there's a casting system for performance. And then after that, there's what's, what we call house band and um, it's through an audition that you get into Houseman. And those kids perform at festivals, they represent the school um, in front of the community. We perform in different places, so our house band performs throughout the city uh, at different venues uh, like the Youth Fair and uh, uh, Wynwood, uh, different festivals at NASCAR as well. 
um, different places. And then our performance students, at the end of every season, they also perform at different locations, specific bars with a stage, and you know, just we, we try to give our students that real rock uh, type of experience uh, when they're performing in front of a crowd. Uh, and uh, yeah, feeling like true rock stars, which is what they've been developing right throughout that uh, semester. In different seasons, they can be in different bands with different people, and they can make different friends along the way. So in a nutshell, if we had five different performance programs, you would have an opportunity to play in five different bands and interact with five different sets of people and make a whole lot of different friends along the way. But basically, while you're here, you tend to interact with a lot of similar people. Either you were in a band with them before, or you're in a band with them now. Um, but it's a great opportunity to like interact with a lot of different people and different musicians at different levels and backgrounds and influences and things like that. The friends that I've had at school, I've known them for a long time. And we're friends mainly because we either have like a class together or like we share, like we do a, like a club together. And it's interesting because here at School of Rock, I'm actually friends with them because of a specific hobby, which is music. I mean, I love music. And it's really cool because you create these friendships not just by talking to these people, you create these friendships by playing songs with them. I walk in the School of Rock, you know. Um, it's great because I walk into the lobby and there's always someone there who I know who, you know, cares about me. So when I first did it, <laughs> there was this girl named Danny, and Danny and I were in a group together. Um, and so we started hanging out, talking, and being friends. So after hanging out for probably like months, playing shows together and everything, we finally asked our moms if we could hang out together. And our moms were like, oh, where do you live? And when my mom told her, she was like, oh, that's literally two minutes from me. So then we became best friends, and she was actually my maid of honor in my wedding about four years ago. And I only met her because of this. I wouldn't have known, even though she lived two minutes down the street from me. So my friends at School of Rock are very diverse in all ways, from many different ages to different schools, and we all have tons of different interests. And at school, most of my friends are about the same age, same grade, same interests. We live like near each other. They're just mostly the same. So thanks to School of Rock, I met a lot of different people that I probably would have never met. For Radio Vision, I'm Amelie Sandini. Spirit Week started this week. Don't forget to dress up. Today is Zoom Attire Day. Wednesday is Whiteout Day, Thursday is Bring Out Anything But a Backpack Day, and Friday is Raider Pride. And now, here's Jonah with sports. Thanks, Carlos. The varsity boys lacrosse team took a close 11-9 loss to Westminster Christian, but would then bring it back with a close 8-6 win over American Heritage. The team will play at Cypress Bay today at home at 5 o'clock. The varsity baseball team beat University 6-2, but would then lose a hard-fought game to Doral Academy with a final score of 6-7. The team will play Westminster Christian today at Westminster at 4 o'clock. The girls lacrosse team took a close 9-8 loss to North Broad Prep despite valiant efforts by Morgan Vasquez, Mariana Goodman, and Nicole Cuevero who combined for 6 of the 8 goals in the game. The team would then take a very tough 22-2 loss to St. Andrews. They have a game today at 12 o'clock, but the location and team have yet to be determined. The boys water polo team absolutely smoked Palmetto with a ferocious 18-0 win with senior Parker Rosenthal and Evan Abro combining for five goals and Gabe Lewis Kaiser adding on three assists. This officially makes the boys your 2022 district champions. Congrats to the team. The girls water polo team absolutely nuked Cutler Bay 27-1 with Aria Toretta and Emily Miller combining for eight goals and Emily Miller and Gabby Montalva combining for six assists. This makes the girls your official 2022 district champions. Congratulations to the team. That's it for sports. Now back to the desk. Thanks, Jonah. If you have any story that you would like to be featured on Raider Vision, send us an email to raidervision.gulliverprep.org. We'll see you next time.